Malazan, Book of the Fallen. Malazan, Book of the Fallen. Malazan? Malazan. The 10 book series by Steven Erickson. Children are dying. Lol nodded. That's a succinct summary of humankind, I'd say. Who needs tomes and volumes of history? Children are dying. The injustices of the world hide in those three words. Survivors do not mourn together. They each mourn alone. Even when in the same place, grief is the most solitary of all feelings. Grief isolates, and every ritual Every gesture, every embrace, is a hopeless effort to break through that isolation. None of it works. The forms crumble and dissolve. To face death is to stand alone. Fallen. Who tracks our footsteps, I wonder? We who are the forgotten, the discounted, and the ignored. When the path is failure, it is never willingly taken. The fallen. Why does my heart weep for them? Not them, but us. For most assuredly, I am counted among them. Slaves, serfs, nameless peasants, and laborers. The blurred faces in the crowd. Just a smear on memory. A scuffing of feet down the side passages of history. Can one stop? Can one turn and force one's eyes to pierce the gloom and see the fallen? Can one ever see the fallen? And if so, what emotion is born in that moment? Why, without a sense of humor, you are blind to so much in the world, to human nature, to the absurdity of so much that we say and do. No one chooses me. I do not give anyone that right. I am Karsa or Long of the Tebloor. All choices belong to me. No tyrant could thrive where every subject said no. The tyrant thrives when the first fucking fool salutes. Witness! And here comes the part where, you know, it's the start of the review. I'm supposed to try and summarize Malazan, Book of the Fallen, and I feel a deep empathy for all the other YouTubers who have made, like, tried to make an entire video that adequately summarizes it. And th there's a really, really simple explanation for why it's ridiculously hard, and that's most series you name have, like, a main group of characters. Even if it's like, you know, there's a case a couple of them are the protagonist, like, even, like, you know, Lord of the Rings kind of has two protagonists. You're like, all right, gonna summarize it. What's the story of Frodo? What's the story of Aragorn? Malazan, there's like a hundred candidates for protagonist. So, I mean, there just isn't one. It's, it's the story of the world, not of a group of people. Um, it would kind of be like trying to tell me to summarize the events of Earth for like a 10-year stretch. It's like, summarize earth like i can say this important thing happened during that time but it's just so inadequate right like i can be like yeah there were these battles and there was scheming if i'm trying to summarize Malazan, but it's not really what it's about and if i like there is a bigger story thread like things do come together and there is something i could say that would be like the most important part but it's a spoiler so i i can't actually tell you what it is so um I'm not, I'm not even going to try and summarize it past that. Just, it has... It's the story of the world of Malazan, which a large part of is controlled by the Malazan Empire. And stuff happens. There you go. The first section of the review is going to be the reading experience. What type of book is it? What emotions can you expect to feel? The writing spot style how the works thematically, and I'm specifically I'm going to address the aspects of it being confusing as you read it, which is true at times. I'm going to talk about how Erickson uh, interworks philosophy into this work, um, 
and kind of what type of emotional response it got from me while I was reading it because there were some strong ones. So first off, so, so sometimes, especially in book one, where I think, like Erickson through the series continually improves at communication to the reader. Um, the entire time, he's not going to just tell you things, but in book one, and sometimes in later books, sometimes it just feels like he's just hiding information just because. Like you will sometimes get uh, the thing where it's like people are having a conversation about something not that important. And then they're like, okay, so let's now discuss our super secret plan that everyone wants to know about. And then just cuts to another point of view. I'm like, come on, you could have left me for that conversation. So, but in general, I think when people say confusion, a lot of it is that many aspects of the world building and like the political intrigue and where people stand in society are meant to be a mystery and you're meant to figure it out. So a lot of the times when you don't, like usually I found when I was completely confused about something and I asked someone who knew, they're like, you're supposed to not know and you're supposed to be trying to figure it out. So a lot of the time, even when I didn't know what was going on, that's because like, you're not supposed to know what that specific thing is because there's a lot of elements to mystery of this world. Um, uh, but I'd say, go out for, I, I found Memory of Ice even though it was even more complicated than the first two and had like maybe more stuff thrown at you, I also the most knew what was going on by far of the first three. So I think it, it, there's a huge jump in just how good Erickson like communicates information from Gardens of to a new reader from Gardens of the Moon to Dead House Gates. Um, and then there's another jump to Memories of Ice and then he stays pretty good at it throughout. And I think in Gardens of the Moon... There were quite a few times when I was confused when I wasn't supposed to be. In Dead House Gates, there were maybe a couple. And then after that, I think most of the time when I didn't know what was going on, it's because I was supposed to not know what was going on. And actually, so Erickson kind of knew, knew, really knew what he was doing. And it still was a rewarding thing to read. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about for kind of how it's reading is how Erickson weaves philosophy into his works. Because... If you've heard people talk about the series, you know there's a lot of characters philosophizing and going on and on. And especially in the second half. It really, it shoots up pretty quickly to like, a lot. Um, and I think the key to it is, when Erickson has someone philosoph like saying philosophy stuff, the point isn't like, the thing to remember is a lot of the time... Like, the character is going to be wrong a lot. And, you know, not necessarily wrong or right, but you're supposed to, when you see a bit of philosophy, think about it and what the implications are and whether you agree with it. And I think there probably is think conclusions Erickson wants you to get to, but he basically is going to try to try and get you to get to those conclusions yourself by getting you to think about it more. Like, I think he is convinced that he has some correct conclusions and that if given more thought, people will come to those same conclusions. And a lot of the philosophy is to try and get you to think about it. So, so when someone says something about, starts like saying philosophy stuff, I actually, one reason I read these books slower than I did other books is there was more of just, of like putting it down and thinking. I started especially noticing around like the Bone Hunters, I'd be reading something and then I'd start thinking about it and I started, would start reading the next couple sentences but not paying attention because I was thinking about the last thing. So then I just had to like stop and think about it for a second, which is one reason why I read it a little bit slower. Um, but it, it did lead to some very rewarding experiences. And I think especially where this stood out the most was Toll the Hounds, which is book eight and my favorite book in the series and just one of my favorite books of all time now. Um, and this was, I thought, where this was the most masterfully done. But I, I mean, Toll the Hounds is one of those books where it definitely has flaws, but it's just so good. I don't care about those flaws. Um, and so, yeah, that, that's how I would encourage you to uh, go about his philosophy. Obviously, there's a lot about compassion, but there's, even though that's like the topic that there's the mo most philosophy on, it's not close to a majority because he covers so much ground in this series. Um, and I think the qual quantity of philosophy is why the second half is a little bit more divisive than the first half. 
I think I liked the second half more. It had my least favorite book, but other than that, I thought, like, I pretty much loved 6, 7, 8, and 10. Um, and just in general, I would encourage you while reading it, if you get to a bit of philosophy that merits some thought, to stop for a minute and think about it before continuing the book. Um, and yeah, I can, I can imagine people on reread really delving into that, and I can see one reason why that would be really rewarding. And so while reading Malazan, I think pretty much most of the emotional notes will hit. In general, um, a lot of the books were pretty crushing and somewhat devastating. Um, Erickson is not at all afraid to, to kill characters. Um, I want, he might be the author I've read that kills the most characters. He also might have the most death fakeouts, but w while normally I don't like death fakeouts, a lot of the time death fakeouts really bother me because the author is scared to kill characters. In this case, I, I'm somewhat indifferent about the death fakeouts. I'll say there are a huge amount of death fakeouts in this series, but there are also a huge amount of, like, major character deaths. Um, so no one is safe, but also no one is confirmed dead. Everyone could be alive, but everyone could die. That's, that's how it works. Um, and some of the, especially some of the character deaths, were really devastating, but also, like... Not, th those weren't even, I think, the most kind of hit you in the feel moments. It was some character moments. Um, despite all the ridiculous, ep epic stuff in this series, my favorite moment in the series is literally a conversation in a tent between brothers. And I, I actually, I had to like put the book down for like a few minutes because I had to recover. Um... Damn, it was good. And even my second favorite, probably my top three moments, are all basically just character moments. Um, and also, I will say, and actually going back to the confusion thing, because where I said, like, all the times I was confused later I was supposed to be, that's actually a somewhat lie. There was also some boring parts in, the, in this series, especially for not a lot, but... Erickson introduces a lot of new characters, and for the last couple books, the characters started to get more hit and miss as they went on. Um, so basically, like, if you compare the 400th most developed character in this series compared to pretty much any other series, they'd probably hold up pretty well, but since there are so many point of views and so many people who are more important to the series, that 400th person just obviously not being as well developed as the better fleshed out characters in the series. Um, them not being as interesting of a character had a much larger impact on my enjoyment of the series than a super unimportant character in most other series. Um, so it, it resulted in having quite a few characters where I just, their voice didn't stand out and I didn't really feel like I knew them at all despite being in books where I was super in their head. Um, that Which is one of the main issues, really the only issue I have with the second half of, the only significant issue I have with the second half of Malazan. Um, although what was kind of weird is there was a bunch of characters in Dust of Dreams whose like voices blurred together, and then in The Crippled God, I feel like he handled it better. Like he, it was just better, it seemed better written to me. Like there were characters who before didn't seem to have that distinct of a voice to me, and then instantly they did, which might contribute to there was a plot line I didn't care at all about in book nine, and then like 200 pages into book 10, I was like, this is ridiculously amazing. Um, but th that I think that's really... I think you'd be hard-pressed to convince me that the series doesn't have some POV bloat. Like, it was super ambitious, and he went for it, and... I think for what Erickson was trying to do, he did, like, I don't know if someone else could have done it better, but I just, it was, I think, aimed a little bit high, which, I mean, I guess is commendable to try and improve as an author, but it led to some books having issue, like, just me not enjoying them that much because a lot of the new characters just weren't that distinctive or memorable. Um, 
but still, um, in general, like, I still, for, like, emotional moments, the most it was good, I was engaged with most of the books, there was a full combination of, like, oh shit, that was epic, two, also one, laughter, one thing I have not I don't think Erickson has been given enough credit for, even by mega Malazan, Malazan fans, is his sense of humor. Which, the, the humor in this book, I hadn't heard anything about Erickson humor. I wasn't expecting there to be much humor. And then it's also the thing he maybe improves at the most. So I guess I kind of see it like you don't want to super hype up his humor and then someone reads Gardens of the Moon and Dead House Gates and it's kind of like, okay, the humor was fine, but... He probably really hit his stride for humor in book five to me. And then from there, I probably laughed out loud multiple times in every book. Um, and some of the funniest characters I've read. And also, does a, mostly, mostly, um, does a very good job of having his funny characters still having emotional moments. There's one exception to this, and it's my least favorite of the comedic characters in the series by far. <sighs> Damn it, Ublaba Pong, I probably pronounce your name wrong, but I can't stand that character. I find him so unfunny. Anyways, if you read the series, I I mean, I can't imagine. There's got to be people who agree with me on that. I can't stand that character. Why? Anyway, we're moving on. Most of the characters, some of my favorite comedic characters I've read, laughed out loud multiple times. Um, it, like, there's some authors, when you know their humor is really good, when you'll be somewhere else, like a day after you read something, and you'll, I'll just randomly think of a line, and I'll start chuckling, and like, you know, if I'm at work or something, the people just be like, what the hell are you laughing about? Are you crazy? Anyway, the humor does not get enough credit for the humor. It is top-notch. He's probably not literally the best humor author I've read, but 100% he'd be in the top five. I don't know where he'd be in the top five, but he'd 100% be in the top five authors at writing humor that in, in the genre that I've read. So, Malazan characterization. Probably the most divisive topic of this series, but uh, I definitely fall on the side that Steven Erickson's really damn good at characterization. Um, I have some issues with it, with some aspects of it, which we will get into, but for the most part, um, he had an, a staggeringly large cast of characters, um, and I was invested in a huge amount of them, and interested in most of the ones I wasn't invested in. He's really, really good at getting us to know characters who barely talk. Like, there are some characters who are, like, really stoic and don't really talk at all, and you're not in their head very often or at all, and yet I feel like I know them as people. Um, I'm actually not completely sure how he pulled that off. It, it, it doesn't make sense, but it's possible, apparently. I don't know how it's possible, but he did it. Um, he's really, really good at subtle character development, which is just people will start acting differently throughout the series. And you'll think back to like book one and be like, oh yeah, that person was like that, huh? Um, really fantastic at that. Um, and like, there's some characters who it's just like every line of dialogue is just like, there was, at one point, I was like, is this person really my favorite character? And then they had, because there'd been a bit where I hadn't read about them, and then they had, like, I got, there was a scene with them, and they're, like, two lives out, I was like, yeah, that's my boy. He's great. Um, obviously, I'm not going to say who it is, because you have to, actually, eh, you can, you can read the series. I'll tell you later. Um, but just a huge cast of really, the, the, there's a huge amount of different types of people and people who see the world differently. Even though, for the main cast, like, I do think this is getting a bit into the cons. For the second half, there were more point of view characters than there needed to be. So basically, for new characters, um, I'll say there are multiple locations for Malazan. And it's not like each location is like a city and it's like you go to this city, then back to this city. Each location on its own is huge. And so usually when there's one location and you get back to it a second time, most of the book will happen in a completely new part of the world. Pretty much all 10 books are like a completely new part of the world. Um, and there will be new people. There will be like probably at least a third of virtually every book is new point of view characters, except The Crippled God, but that's because Dust of Dreams and The Crippled God are supposed to be one book. So there's not going to be... It, they just had to be split into two volumes. 
Um, and they were hit and miss. Like in some of the books, I love the new characters. Toll the Hounds and Midnight Tides, which are my two favorite books in the series as well. Um, stand out in that not... I mean, Midnight Tides is virtually... Anyway, the, both of those, like the new characters, they all felt so distinctive and so interesting. And they were so well written. And a lot of them had great character development and wonderful arcs. And there were some new characters in some of the books, but like, for example, the first half of Reaper's Gale, um, for this reason, was a bit of a slog to me. Um, now the second half of Reaper's Gale was mind-bogglingly amazing, but the first half, um, and then basically all of Dust of Dreams had a huge amount of characters that we just spend a lot of time reading about them thinking. Um, he really gets way more in his characters' heads for the later book. Like, I actually, I think for Gardens of the Moon, he probably spends less time in his character's head than, like, 90% of fantasy authors. Then by the time he gets to the Crippled God, he spends more time in characters' heads than, like, 90% of authors. Um, and there are some characters who I spent literally hundreds of pages in their head, and I don't feel like I know them at all. But, mostly, um, he just writes really fantastic character development, wonderful character moments, has some great relationships, not romances. So this is probably the only time I will use this word describing Malazan. For the most part, Malazan romances are bad. Just straight up. They're not, they're just shit for the most part. On the other hand, his bromances are like, chef's kiss levels of fantastic. There's one good romance. You'll see it in Toll the Hounds. It's the only good one. There's maybe like two other eh ones. And then there's a romance where the two characters have one line of dialogue and then spend an entire book apart thinking of how they're in love. Like, come on. It's full on insta love. Like, what is with writing big 10 plus book fantasy series, I'm thinking Wheel of Time and Malazan, with like a huge world and just have not setting up your romances? You have... Three to four million words. There's plenty of time. Neither of them do it. I don't know. It's the same for Jordan and Erickson. Both of them, some of the worst romances writers I've read. Sometimes, like, after their romance, it's okay, but the setup ranges from non-existent to very suspicious, which is probably why the one romance that I think is good is one that was a romance that was there at the start of the series. Like, it's been one for a long time. But... Setup romances, only time I'm going to use this word in this review, probably, I think it's just straight up bad. Probably the only aspect of his writing that I would use for that word. But, on the other hand, it's not that important part of an important part of a series, so it didn't really affect my enjoyment that much. Like, you're not reading Malazan for the romances. You're just, you're not. No one is. And if you are, very suspicious, but you're not. Um, so it doesn't take up that much time, but when it's there, it's, it's just bad. Um, but his non-romance relationships are great. Like, his family relationships, his just, like, really good friendships. Oh, there's some brilliant friendships in this series. People who, like, obviously would risk their lives for the other and would trust the other person with their life, but also because they're different people and they're realistic friendships, they'll still clash and disagree and not always just be the same person. Just wonderful friendships that are just brilliantly crafted and set up and developed. Hard for me to praise it more. Some of the best, like, bromances I've read. Um, re yeah, that part of the series, like, if the romances are the worst part of the series, the bromances are in contention for the best. They're wonderful. Um, and now I'm going to get to a nitpick that's probably petty. But I'm saying it anyways. And that's, uh, the timeline for Malazan is ridiculously large. And there are characters who have been alive for that entire time. And here's one where I, I get slightly confused. Because Malazan people will say, like, Oh, one brilliant thing Erickson did is there's this super old character that you just... You never get in the head in. Because you just couldn't understand how someone that old would see the world. And I agree. And yet, there's, like, I don't know, a lot of other point of views from characters who are just as old. Which, you've just told me you can't do, and it wouldn't work. Why'd you do it? Well, I don't know why he did it, but I, I, for when I got in the head of the characters who were multiple hundred thousands of years old, sometimes they were entertaining characters, 
I never once felt like they were 300,000 years old. In general, I think it's really hard to make characters feel really old. Most series have a timeline of like 4,000 years, and convincing me someone is 4,000 years old is already pretty damn hard. Um, convincing me someone is a 286,000 year old is exponentially harder, and every time he got in the head of one, Erickson did not succeed at doing it. Some of them were still interesting characters, they just didn't ever feel like they were a few hundred thousand olds. Is this a total nitpick? Yeah. Did this really largely, like, lower my enjoyment of the series? No. But, you know what? It's there. So, whatever. But, in general, I would put Eric's in... Like, if, you, if someone told me, if I asked, like, who do you think writes the best characters in fantasy, and someone told me they think Erickson, I would be like, yep, yeah, it's a reasonable pick. I'd, I wouldn't pick him as my favorite character writer in fantasy, but I understand if others do, and he would certainly be up there. So characterization gets its own section, because it's the most important. The other, these other three things is probably going to be a shorter section, and they're all in one section. So... Let's start with Malazan prose. Um, I'm not the biggest, like, prose guy. Um, I think probably 80% something, eighty of books I read probably fall in the range of not bad that I cared enough about it and not good enough to significantly affect my enjoyment of the book. Um, and Malazan also fell into that. It would be on the higher end of that. I think pretty obviously Erickson's a pretty good writer. I thought there were kind of one element of his prose that I wasn't the biggest fan of and some that I thought was really good. What I thought was really good was his building of atmosphere and, like, the word choice when he's descri describing the surroundings that makes it feel, like, lived in and you kind of feel like, not, not even that you could see a picture of it, but that, like, what it would be like to actually be there. Um, also, the same thing for characters who really have presence. Um... It, you kind of get to feel like you f could feel what it would be like to in the room. That's really, I think, the strongest part of his prose. Um, and then what I found didn't work as well for me. Um, obviously, this for this section, like the prose, is going to be the biggest. Your mileage may vary. But the part of his prose that didn't work the best for me was the flow from sentence to sentence. Um, I sometimes just found some of like the transitions from sentence to sentence to be a little bit jarring. Um, and sometimes found it hard to build up momentum where it's like, you know, sometimes when you're reading a book that's really, when I'm reading a book that's really good at this, um, I can kind of really get engrossed in the book and not get distracted. And like, you know, at the end of each chapter, at the end of like a paragraph, immediately go to the next paragraph. Sometimes for Malazan, like there'd be some ends and I'd get distracted and I didn't really have that happen for this series. Um, and then there are some issues, I think, especially early on with communication to the reader. And before, 168,000 people tell me that it's just that Erickson doesn't hold my hand. Yes, I'm aware of that. And his world building like that is very, very good. What I mean is when someone is watching something happen and describing it in their head, where like, if I was a camera out of their eyes, I would obviously be able to tell what's going on. And based on the description of it, I was, it was kind of some, at points, unclear of what happened. Um... But that wasn't that big of a deal. I mean, I can just when that happens, I can just go back and read it again. Um, anyway, prose is just not super important to me unless it's really, really good or kind of shit. And it's definitely neither, and it's closer to really, really good. Um, action takes up quite a lot of time in Malazan. There's a lot of action. And I always like to split action into a few different categories um, because I think writing battles and writing fights are very different skills as authors. Um, Erickson for battles, I think, is better than fights. There are still a couple battles that... Uh, uh, some of the battles where things got really big, at times I felt it was kind of just like mashing two armies together. But for the most part, Erickson battles are really damn good. Um, especially his sieges. I Like, I don't... Eric, an Erickson siege is a really damn good siege. Um, like a really damn good siege. Some of the best sieges I've read. Um, his fights among small amounts of people are more hit and miss. Um, it was actually really weird. I started noticing a, in the middle of the series, he started describing a ton of fights super blow by blow. Like there's an entire, there's a super long chapter in the series that has a lot of just like fighting, like not magic, just like people stabbing each other. And there are multiple, like two page long sections that's literally just describing knife fighting 
line by line, move by move, with no character stuff at all. I can't stand this type of action. Um, it took what probably could have been one of the coolest like climaxes of the books and made it one of my most meh climaxes of the books. Um, even though the book in general was still really good. Um, but there are also some fights that are fantastic. And it's usually when he relies more on his skill at being like atmospheric um, and not describing things blow by blow. Um, it revolves a certain spear boy in Midnight Tides pretty early on. For those of you who've read the series, I think that's a non-spoiler way of saying it. And ice. Um, that like that fight scene, for example, was wonderful. Um, it was, yeah. So for action, I found him very hit miss. In general, duels, I'll say he's probably actually the thing he's the most consistently engaging at. Um, I can't think of a single one-on-one -on -one fight I didn't enjoy in the series. Um, and there's some really fantastic ones. Um, so I, I'd give him like a nine out of ten for duels like a five or a six for fights and like an eight for battles. I, I will say one thing that is a little bit bothersome is so, so some things it's kind of like Erickson's trying to make the battles like for the non-magical elements really realistic. And there are some aspects of it where it's just kind of like, I shake my head a little bit. Um, like for example, um, in World War One, obviously people fought in tr inside trenches, but in medieval warfare, you dig the ditch and you stand behind the ditch. Um, so that way, when people are climbing out of the ditch, you can stab them. Uh, people stand in trenches a lot in this series, which is a total nitpick. 99% of you probably won't care, but every time I rolled my eyes, um, especially since I, I'd been told that Malazan has like supposed to be like hyper-realistic battles and medieval tactics, it's good. Um, people suck at defending cities. Put ditches, put moats. People need more moat. I guess in seven cities you can't have a no, moat. For fair enough, but I'd say duels fantastic. Fights hit and miss. Some good, some bad. Battles hit and miss, but mostly hit. Especially sieges were really engaging, and uh, I think there's one of the sieges that I would describe as one of the most exhausting in the best way possible reads. Um, and last is plotting, which I basically have nothing bad to say about. He's an absolutely brilliant plotter. Um, maybe, I, I mean, I have to reach for bad things, but it's like, this is one where when you have a 10 book series and half the books are over three, like 1200 pages, there's going to be some parts in the series where it doesn't feel like progress is being made. Um... So in general, just pacing large books is much, much harder than pacing small books. So even though I think some books had pacing issues, I think that's inevitable in a series of this size. And I think it still overall has good pacing. It's just pacing. Like every series of this size by default is always going to have pacing issues. And you will not find a large series that there aren't people who say this book could have been way shorter. Like 100% of them no matter how successful they are a hundred percent um especially books of like when they're this large anyway um but then plotting in terms of like weaving threads together and having something like this person is doing affecting someone is this doing and it being really realistic and set up and pay off and just like having convergences and um having it all come into a epic ending like steven erickson has some of the most badass epic final acts i've ever read full stop and in general plotting wise is an incredible author um i think at this point my favorite final acts in I fiction some of them are malazan um and i really like me my big endings if you know me so that that's a huge plus to this series for me um not like yeah just in general so plotting hard for me to really say much that's negative it's mostly pretty Damn excellent. Hi, Vin. Let's ask Vin what she thinks about Erickson plotting. Erickson, what do you think about the plotting? Hmm. She doesn't seem to care. All right. Now is the part where if you are a huge Malazan fan and you just would give every book a 10 out of 10 without thinking, you, you might just want to leave. You don't want to, you don't want to watch this part, but 
If you're wondering what I think of Malazan, this is a pretty important section. Um, I've definitely alluded to some of these, but we're going to be more specific here. Um, the first thing I have to talk about is actually something that didn't bother me as much, and it's just the barrier to entry of the series. Um, and it didn't bother me, and it probably doesn't bother the huge Malazan fans that much, because Malazan fans, because we're crazy. And so, f uh, like, f it starts with the Siege of Pale, and some people were like, oh, this was epic. Uh, the Siege of Pale was one of those parts where I just didn't care about anyone in it, so it just felt like this is really cool, but I didn't care at all what happened. So for the first 150 pages, I didn't give a shit about what was going on. I was like, yeah, I guess that's cool, but I don't care about any of these people. Um, and I don't care that much about 150 pages barrier of entry, but that's because I'm crazy. And I read that in like a day, on an average day. So th if, if you read seven books a year, which is like what normal people do who aren't crazy um yeah 150 pages barrier uh, if if you like the 150 first 150 pages as much as me it's kind of an issue right like in in general for the like malazan has a very very high barrier of entry like it takes a while quite a few pages to really get into it i i just don't care as many as other people but if, if you're not willing to potentially read pages that you don't care about to get to the good stuff I mean, both Dead House Gates and Gardens of the Moon have that. I know the Mike's Read Along is on Dead House Gates, and a bunch of people have really struggled with the start of Dead House Gates. Even though I think Dead House Gates is a fantastic book, and the payoff is totally worth it, that's easier to say when you read as much as as I do, and I just, I, I'm willing to read through the stuff I don't care about as much to get to the really good stuff. But that definitely is an issue many people will have with Malazan. Now... To move on to a much more specific thing that I don't hear get talked about as much and bother the shit out of me. Um, and it's not all of how this was handled, but there's some specific things. And there, so there's a lot of rape in Malazan, which isn't inherently bad in a series. But there are a couple issues of how it's handled that bothered the ever-loving shit about me, uh, with me. The first is, off the top of my head, I can come up with four instances where the actual character or a close friend of a character being raped directly led to them getting a magical power-up. Now, four times isn't a lot, but four times is four more times than I want that to be in a series I'm reading. I'm not a fan of that at all. No. Um, also, two of them were in some of my favorite books in the series, which was rough because I really wanted to like those books even more. Um, and the other is that a lot of the point of views of characters who are just pretty shit, like they're just terrible people, um, in the first page, um, they'll just think about how they like rape and how much of a fan of rape they are. And it's like, come on, you can be more subtle at making someone not likable than that. Like you've done it before. Um, in general, I've seen people say like Malazan has no characters who are like all bad. Really? Like Malazan doesn't have... A force of nature that's an embodiment of evil but some of its like at most evil people are about as irredeemable and pure bad as any pure bad people i've read in fiction like there's some like ramsey bolton tier people in this series so i i've seen people say that there's no one who's like all bad and i i i remember house of chains and reaper's gale and i disagree um there's also, there's this one really weird one, which, remember earlier I said Erickson was really good at subtle character character development? This was an example of some not-so-subtle character development that normally he doesn't do, but he did it a couple times, especially in Dust of Dreams. One of the big issues I had with Dust of Dreams, which is by far my least favorite in the series, um, it's you had a character who he gets the thing where, hey, I th he, in the first uh, page of his point of view, he lets you know how he thinks killing children is just cool. And that rape is just, he's pro-rape. Um, and then, like, there's, like, a sequence where he just has, like, conversations with people and then is, like, a really thoughtful, compassionate, selfless person. And it's just, I, bullshit. I don't believe someone went from that bad to that good based on a couple conversations. Like, I'm not willing, I, no. It, it was... So that was some character development that I was just like, I don't buy that at all. Now, mostly, he's very, very good at character development. And in all honesty, most of these issues 
There's it's like half in Dust of Dreams, half the rest of the series combined. Um, Dust of Dreams, I said it's not. Uh, it's the most Erickson book. All the things I have issues with in the series, he did them all squared in Dust of Dreams, which is why it's. I, di- I didn't like it. It's it's the only book that like all the other books like Gardens of the Moon. I had issues with, but I have a review on it. Overall, I like the book. Dust of Dreams, I didn't. Um, and it's just because all these issues showed up there. Um, and the last one is me being really petty here because this isn't even something he's bad at. He's probably above average at, but it's just since I've been told he never does it and it's why he's way better than everyone else, I noticed it literally every time and I noticed it quite a bit. And that's just like someone thinking in their head of how their relationship with someone has changed. Or like thinking of how, oh, this person's situation is unique and affecting the comes of that. What happened to show, don't tell? That's not showing. That's telling. Um, he doesn't do it a lot, but he does it. Like, he does. Go go read the first Crocus chapter of House of Chains, then come back to me and tell me he doesn't. If you actually do that, like really, if you think he never does it, go read the first chapter there of House of Chains. There you go. Um, but... Still, like, I, I had to have this section because I, I have to say the issue, thing, issues I have with it, but, like, most of them are pretty overshadowed. It's overall, I still love the series, but I definitely didn't think it was a perfect series. So, my final thoughts. Well, to sum it up, it's a series that I don't think is for everyone, but if someone asks for a recommendation that it fits, it's probably going to be the best recommendation for it. Overall, despite my nitpicks, I really, really thought it was a wonderfully crafted series. Um, some of the best world build, world building I've ever encountered. A w- incredible cast of characters. Um, like if I do a top character list, there's going to be someone from Malazan on it. Um, I wasn't bothered by the changing settings. I actually, I th- I didn't mind hopping around at all. Um, because I thought the intro to each new setting was better than the intro to the last setting, which probably made it hurt less. Um, it's a it's a series that maybe compared to my favorites ever hit lower lows, but com- it it hit some damn high highs as well. Um, I'm probably I'm gonna probably at some point in the distant future do a reread with like all the other Malazan stuff. One thing I will mention is. I'd recommend trying to read them as close to back to back as your brain can handle. I think if I like, I was already forgetting stuff. If I spread these out, um, I think I would have struggled, enjoyed it less. Um, and I think like Daniel Green said in his series Re- Crippled God review that he says he wished he bin- binged it. And I actually, I think nearly binging it, maybe like alternating with one other series, you can alternate with Dresden. And that gives me an excuse to recommend Dresden. Um, and that's, I think, a really good way to go. Um, I think if you read, like, one book every, like, if you put five books in between each Malazan book, you're going to forget a lot of the stuff, and it really, I could see it hurting your enjoyment of the future books, but I, uh, I can give to, to the people who aren't, aren't worried about a big barrier to entry, entry, or having to remember a bunch of characters, and are okay with a lot of philosophy, or if you act actively like want a super philosophy heavy book, I can give my uh, a very strong recommendation for Malazan Book of the Fallen.